Okay, so today we're going to do the limit definition of the derivative. In particular, we're going to focus just on setting up the limit definition of the derivative. And this is probably the most common limit definition of the derivative, the one I have here in the red box. So if you want to, right now you can pause the video and try to set up this limit definition of the derivative for each of these functions. And it's a completely separate problem to actually take it all the way, simplify through, and get the derivative. We're just going to be setting up. Okay, so for problem one, we have our f of x is 3x squared. And so what you need to work on for plugging into this limit definition of the derivative is anywhere you had an x in the original function, you're going to put in parentheses x plus h, end parentheses. So there's an x here, so we just copy and pasted x plus h. That's just this very first part in the numerator that represents f of x plus h. After that, you always do minus and then just an original copy of the original function. So in parentheses, 3x squared. And in this case, it's only one term in the function, so you don't have to put parentheses. But it's a good habit because if the function has more than one term, you need to make sure that that negative sign distributes to every single term. That's a really common issue. Okay, so that was problem one. For problem two, we have f of x equals x squared plus x plus one. So we have more than one term here. And for every single instance of the variable x, we're going to put in parentheses x plus h, close parentheses. So you can see that this was an x and this was an x. So this is our f of x plus h. Then at the end in the numerator, you always have to put minus and then a perfect copy of that original function. And the denominator is really easy. It's just always an h. Okay, so for problem three, we had a square root function, f of x equals four root x. And so then plugging into the limit definition of the derivative, we get the limit as h approaches zero, and under the square root, exactly where there used to be an x, we had to put an x plus h. So there was an x in the original function, so we put x plus h. Make sure that plus h is under the square root, right there with the x. And then you always finish the numerator with subtracting a perfect copy of the original function. And your denominator is always the same. Okay, for problem number four, we have x plus 3 squared as our original function. So again, exactly where we had the x originally in the original function, in this f of x plus h that we start our numerator with, we have to put x plus h instead of an x. We have x plus h plus 3 all being squared. And then you finish off the numerator with a, subtracting a perfect copy of the original function, all divided by h. Okay, so for problem five, we have negative x squared. Here, just make sure you have the negative on the outside of the parentheses. And here it is the x being squared. So now it's just going to be parentheses x plus h being squared. And the negative just hangs out front. So if you were to keep simplifying this, you would foil the x plus h and then distribute the negative sign to all three terms you would get in the foil. And then you wrap up the numerator by subtracting a perfect copy of the original function there. And for problem six, we have one with a denominator here. f of x is one over two x. So when we plug it in, exactly where we had the x originally, we're going to put x plus h. So 1 over 2 and then parentheses x plus h. That 2 is going to end up distributing to both of those terms there. 
and then minus a perfect copy of the original function, all divided by h. And last but not least, problem 7. We have f of x is the square root of 3x plus 1. So here for our limit definition of the derivative, under the square root we'll have 3 and then parentheses x plus h because that's exactly where the x was. So you remove the x from the original function and replace it with parentheses x plus h. And don't forget that plus 1, it's still there, it's all under the square root, and that represents your f of x plus h part, and then you subtract a perfect copy of the original function, all divided by h. So that was some practice, just setting up the limit definition of the derivative. It's good to do some repetition back to back like that because in each of these subtle different cases, it can be hard to know where to put the plus h and exactly how to use the limit definition of the derivative.